Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out in Epcot. I wanted to come out and try some more food from the Flower and Garden Festival. And then also I've been really wanting to sit down and watch the American Adventure. It's one of my favorite shows in World Showcase and it always closes early. So I figured we come on out, ride some rides, eat some food and have a beautiful Epcot kind of day. Anywho, let's go do this. It's a little bit gloomy today. Temperatures are in the 60s and I'm a little bit cold, but I'm excited to be here hanging out at Epcot. And look at that, our spaceship Earth. Like I mentioned, I wanted to come back and try some more food from the Flower and Garden Festival. Of course, I came on the opening day and we tried a lot, but I wasn't able to get to everything I wanted to try because we flew to Disneyland. We went to California Adventure and we actually went to their Food and Wine Festival the next day. So we did back to back Flower and Garden and Food and Wine Festival. So there's a couple of things I missed out on and I figured today would be like part two. It is currently 2.27 p.m. and both Virtual Queue and Lightning Lanes are still available for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. So I'm going to join the Virtual Queue. Might as well. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. I'm all joined up, ready to go. It says it's a 345 minute wait. <laughs> so maybe we might not be able to ride that today. But I mean, maybe if we're still here, I can't pass up Guardians of the Galaxy. It's very interesting to see how long Disney's gonna continue doing a virtual queue for Guardians of the Galaxy once Tron opens up. From what I've been told or what I've been hearing, they are gonna do virtual queues for both Tron and Guardians of the Galaxy for a little bit, but I don't see it lasting that much longer. Of course, I had to grab my Flower and Garden Festival passport, but like I said, we already tried a lot of the food, and if you guys want to watch those videos, they're just a couple back, and if you can't find them, I'll put a link in the description too. They also started selling a power line candy here in Epcot in the creation shop. They have like a taffy and it's called like Power Limes. And I love a goofy movie and I love Power Line, so I think we're gonna stop in there first and get it. And here they are. I found them hanging out by the register and I can't wait to actually try them. Look at it, stand out with power lime, sour lime taffy. This is gonna be so awesome. And here we go, power limes. I can't wait to try this. Sour lime taffy. And it's even cool because they say stand out with power limes. It really gets me excited. It's one of my all time favorite movie characters. Look at this. Oh, it's very green. Very, very green. I'm not gonna eat all this, so I'm just gonna actually do a little bit. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. A nice little snack for only like $2.50. I bought two of them and I'm gonna keep one in my pocket. Hopefully it doesn't melt, but I like it. I honestly bought two of them because I'm probably gonna keep this and never open it again. I'm not gonna keep it in like as like a collectible, which is crazy. I have way too much stuff, but that's the things I do. <laughs> the weather here in Florida is quite unpredictable. On the opening day, it was so hot out. Everybody got sunburned. And then today, it's so cold out. Like I said, it's in the 60s and it's probably gonna get down to the 50s later on tonight. And I didn't bring any pants. I think we're gonna head straight on into World Showcase and start hitting up some of the Flower and Garden Festival boots. There's a couple of things that I already have my eye on that I wasn't able to get last time. So we're definitely gonna come through on those ones. Blue Oyster Cult is actually playing here today at the Garden Rocks Theater. So I might actually wanna catch that show too because you know, everybody needs more cowbell in their life. And uh, I think the lineup that they have this year is phenomenal. We just got to watch Smash Mouth the other day and I didn't even know they were still making music. One of the stands I wasn't able to get to on opening day was here in Mexico. And they have a lot of great items that I'm really sad I didn't get to try. They got the Taco Vampiro, which is a very popular item. I think I might get that. And then they also have a Crystal Margarita. This looks actually really awesome. And I think I might get a little margarita and a little taco. 
I don't normally miss out on the booth here in Mexico because it's one of my favorites, but I think on opening day, there was a long line and I was gonna come back to it, but I never got the chance to. So today's like our uh, chance to actually come back and get the things that we weren't able to get. All right, here we go. I ended up getting the Taco Vampiro and then the Crystal Margarita. This was $16 and this was $8. The reason this is $16 is because it comes in a collectible little glass here. And I like that. Look at it, a little souvenir. All right, well here we go. Crystal Margarita. Cheers with my fancy glass. Pinky up, darling. Ooh, ooh, that's strong. Ooh, I like that a lot actually too. Because it has a strong taste up front, but then you can really taste like the nice like orange in there orange and lime a lot this is a very good margarita this is gonna sit good now let's get to the taco and look at that looks so good and it's got the nice little i think monterey on the outside there i think that's the cheese that they use and we're gonna dive in we got a taco and we got a margarita oh yeah the barbacoa inside this taco is seasoned so good. I love it. And then also I mentioned this drink actually, but it wasn't lime, it was lemon. So it has a nice uh, little citrusy taste to it with a hint of uh, tequila. And uh, that's actually a good combination. Fire beware, the 100% tequila blanco will definitely creep up on you pretty fast. Unless you kind of like that, then uh, you got yourself a good drink. But be careful, this definitely will creep up on you. I like it though. I'm definitely gonna be walking with this one, but we're making our way over near China and maybe check out China or Germany, both of those stands I wasn't able to get to. And I'm sure they've got great items this year. I also wanted to point out my shirt. I know Garfield isn't a Disney character, but I kind of felt like wearing a Garfield shirt today. Roosevelt's just launched these and I think they're so awesome. I got a bunch of them. I loved Garfield growing up, so it's kind of cool to see a shirt, you know, of him. And then also, oh, my hat, my Duck Donald hat. This is from Shop LBV. They also make the Mouse Mickey red and black one that I wear all the time. And I'll put both of their links in the description in case you ever want to buy any of it. One thing I've always wondered is why does Norway never have a festival booth? Like almost every single country except for Norway has a festival booth. And I always wonder why. I'm sure if I just Google it, I can find out. But it kind of caught my eye there. So, so far we came in, we kind of went like this way and then over to Mexico. I went to get something from China, but there wasn't anything I kind of liked. So I think Germany is next for us. Looks like in Germany, they've got potato pancakes with house-made applesauce. Then they have a toasted pretzel bread topped with black forest ham and melted gruri cheese. And the line is so long, look at that. Another long line. Doesn't matter if it's opening day or not, still long lines, but I'm really in it for the potato pancakes today. I also noticed they had two different potato pancakes this year. They had one with the house-made applesauce, and then they had another one that comes with caramelized onions and ham on it. So I think I got them both. I mean, you can never not have enough potato pancakes, in my opinion. Here is the first one, and this one has the house-made applesauce, and it looks like I got two of them. And then the one with the ham and the onions, I only got one, but I don't know what this water is at the bottom of it. You see that? Maybe it might be from the, uh, the topping of the uh, onions and uh, ham. Maybe it's, maybe it's ham juice, but I'm gonna try to... Hey, there we go. That's how we do it. I fixed it right up. I'm gonna try not making a mess, but I'm going with the applesauce one first. So here we go, big bite. It's very good. It's not like your traditional potato pancake because it has like a different texture to it and it has a different flavor too. I'm not too sure, but I think they might grill them instead of uh, fry them. When I think of potato pancakes, I think of like the carnival or the local fair, you know, at the firehouse. They always make good potato pancakes there. Now it's time to try the one with ham and onion and I didn't get sour cream. I don't like sour cream that much. I'd much rather put applesauce on my potato pancakes and pork chops. So here we go. Oh, 
this is good, a little bit more savory because you got all the onion flavor and then the ham. The other one, you have the applesauce, which will make it a little bit sweeter, but I think I'd go with applesauce. Mainly because you get two of them. Two potato pancakes are better than one. All right, enough with the potato pancake business. Even though I have to say, I like the applesauce ones a little bit better, and I double checked, and they do grill them. They don't fry them, so that must be the way they do it in Germany. It's time to move along and make our way over to America so that we can try to watch the American adventure. Wow, it's really crazy that Italy is the only boot that doesn't have a line and they also have the most amount of people working it. Like they have four different cash registers. The Germany line I just got out of only had two cash registers and the line was long and a lot of people were waiting, but Italy has nothing. And I looked at the menu, they do have like a chocolate hazelnut pudding cooked with like cookie crumble. I think that's the only thing I'd be interested in getting. So I think we're just gonna skip over this. It is nice to see Italy lowering their prices though because in the past they used to have nothing below $10 on that menu but it definitely come down a little bit. As we make our way to America you can see the line is forming for Blue Oyster Cult. A lot of fans here. I don't know when the showtime is. Oh, 5 o'clock so they got an hour. So wait, they got to wait an hour just to see them. Now it's time to make our way into the American Adventure, and I love coming to this show. It's uh, the theater's actually up a floor because all of the animatronics are down below and they raise up to the stage, and it's really awesome. If you love audio animatronics and large stage props, then you're probably gonna love this show. They come up from the stage, like from the bottom, and it's really cool because this building also holds Club 33. Like they have Club 33, and then they also have the theater in there, and it's really cool. It's some of the best production value I think I've ever seen. It's, it's not just screens, and I'm not too sure if I can film in it. If not, I have some stock footage and I'll add a couple of clips in there, but if you get the chance to come check it out, it is 30 minutes, but it's worth it especially if you love history the best thing about this theater is it's upstairs so we actually have to uh, take an escalator up look at that and it's actually really pretty too with all the flags it's a very nice little uh, nice little theater and look how beautiful the theater is in here with all of these statues over here of some of America's greatest heroes look at that I think we're going to go sit down. I like to be up close. I like being front row-ish. Thomas, it is difficult to make 13 clocks chime at the same time. But we must carefully justify the separation. Dr. Franklin, while you slept soundly through the meeting this afternoon, we did manage to justify separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I shall spend another night up here. There be not a ration amongst us. Now we can forage for hickory nuts. Hi. While the English overindulge in our Philadelphia's fine food and drink. Uh, it is a strange war we shoulder, George Washington. Congress sleeps warmly in York. And the British, the British party in Philadelphia. Both of you, you're gonna ruin Ma's birthday. No, no. Ain't nothing gonna ruin today. We're all together. That's what counts. Now, you go ahead, Mr. Brady. All right, everybody. Oh, real still now. They have made this country what it is. We ask justice. We ask equality be guaranteed to us and our daughters forever. Well, here we are. Back in the heat of Franklin's Philadelphia again. We're a hundred years old today. We came a long way in that first century. Well, Mr. Twain, what do you think of our America now? 
I think the Founding Fathers never dreamed of an America like this. <laughs> of course not. I love that show so much. I'm so happy I got to actually finally watch it. Like I said, usually it closes around 7. I always miss it, but uh, I got to I got to enjoy it today. And now we're going to move along. Even though now I'm all rested up. I mean, it's it's so nice and cozy in there. They turn the lights off and you got nice comfy seats. It's a good way to get out of the heat and also relax a little bit. Now we got to keep moving along and I want to make my way over to Morocco. They have one of the uh, desserts there from the Flower and Garden Festival that I really wanted to try, but I couldn't last time. So today's my redemption. When it comes to the Morocco Pavilion here, I always miss it because it's inside. It's not an outdoor like stand or booth and uh, sometimes I just walk right past it. But inside the Tangerine Cafe, they have grilled kebabs, they have a hummus trio, and then they've got the orange blossom chiffon cake. And that is what I came here today to get, and it's only $5, so we're gonna go get it. Doesn't it look so pretty? All right, here it is, the orange chiffon cake. And we got some pistachios there, and it looks so pretty, doesn't it? We're gonna dive in. I'm sitting here next to the transportation, the Friendship Landing, and uh, I'm excited to try it. It looks really good. It's a beautiful view. We've got a beautiful cake, a little breeze, and I'm gonna cut right on in here. I'm not even sure how I cut into this. Because there's multiple ingredients, I wanna get a little bit of everything in one bite, so I figured maybe just like right down the side here, Oh boy, I think I've already made a mistake here. Oh wait, let me let me do it this side. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Now that's a true bite, one bite right there. You guys know I like to get a little bit of everything in one bite, so here we go. Mmm. That is really such a unique flavor. I like it so much. It's fruity, it's nutty, it's earthy. It's really, really good. That's what it is. I just ran into my friends Jim and Kathy, and they had this, and they gave it to me. Look at this. It's a little Mickey with his uh, little fedora on. It made me think. You guys think I should bust out the fedora and bring it back on the next video? Make it a, uh, an appearance again? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I mean, right now it's cold out. I don't mind so much wearing the hat. My problem is usually when it comes to summertime, because when it gets hotter out, sometimes the fedoras, they're not the best especially in the heat. So let me know, maybe I'll bring it back if enough of you guys say something. When I did say I was gonna stop wearing the fedora, I didn't mean like forever. I wanted to bring it out, you know, for like, you know, occasions, maybe even special occasions, because it is a fancy hat. But you know, I wouldn't mind breaking it out and making an appearance within the next couple of days. <laughs> and now we've made our way back out to the front of the park. We did a whole lap, whole lap around World Showcase. I love that. Oh, you got Bambi over here and Thumper. I haven't really got to point out much of the topiaries, but I've been uh, looking at them. They're so pretty to look at, and I also like smelling all the flowers. Unfortunately, our boarding group wasn't called in time, and I have to start making my way out of the park because I have movie tickets to go see Shazam 2, which I'm excited to see Shazam. And it still says we have a 105 minute wait, so we're not gonna be able to ride Guardians of the Galaxy. And instead, I'm gonna give you the second best ride here at Epcot, good old Figment. Look at that. We're ready to journey into imagination. I had to stop and see my good old friend, our, my good buddy old pal Figment. I'll probably bring you guys along with me as I go see Shazam 2. I mean, not in the movie theater because you can't film inside the movie theater, but I'm gonna go watch it down at Disney Springs and I always like showing a AMC down there because I think it's one of the best movie theaters, especially at the Dolby Theater. That's why I always try to watch the movies as soon as they come out because they only show the new movies in that theater. So I always rush to get there as soon as possible. But before we make our, you know, exit down to Disney Springs, gotta stop in, at least get one ride in. And figure it's a good five minute wait. I love this ride. You can't convince me otherwise. I must be the only person that does like this ride because there's nobody coming in. I've been standing here for five minutes and nobody's coming in to actually ride the ride. There's nobody in front of me. Look at, <laughs> and I like to, I look. I like to stop here because you get to see Buzz Lightyear in this little cage right here. You see Buzz Lightyear right there? And then also you can see Tinkle, uh, Tinkerbell inside that little hole right there. A little, uh, little Easter egg. But I guess we're gonna 
I guess we're gonna go ride the ride now. <laughs> We've waited long enough. A special drive through open house. I'm Dr. Nigel Channing, chairman of the Imagination Institute. Hello, on your tour, you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. Oh, oh, can I go too? Absolutely not. Uh, this is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. Yeah, I know all about the senses. They're sight, sound, smell, touch, cookie cookie go, and taste. Taste my chicken. Can I go? Please, please, please. No. You've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. <laughs> now I've completely lost my train of thought. No, you haven't. Hearing a thousand thoughts. Can't start up hearing. And each of us imagines different things. From just a imagination for its best when it's set free. Chocolate, cinnamon, vanilla, coffee, cookies right here. All the amazing flavors on this ride. But yet, we always get skunk. I even want the grass, or the jasmine, or the orange. Use your imagination, so let the good times You can never go wrong with a journey into imagination. I love that ride. I love being able to just sit back, relax, and smell the skunk. It's the best. On my way out, I noticed this sign over here where they're giving 40% off select Epcot 40th anniversary celebration items. 40% off for the 40th. And look at all this stuff. I mean, that's actually a really good deal. It's almost half off. And I'm pretty sure you can stack your uh, you can stack your uh, discount. So if you have a cast member or an annual pass holder, you can stack that on top of the 40%. Even the lounge flies are still here. Wow. Well, now I think it's time to start making our way out. How to stop and uh, say bye to Spaceship Earth. Ooh, and a monorail. Ooh, look at that. I love it when this happens. I didn't time that. I mean, I didn't mean to do that on purpose. It was just good timing. But look at that. Monorail orange going by. But yeah, and also the nice topiaries over here. Take a look at this. I just walked out of the park and I looked down at my phone and you'll never believe it. Look at this. My group was called. And sorry, Bonnie, I missed your phone call and your text. I miss a lot of things. I, I'm not too good at keeping up because I, I allow it all to pile in here and then I end up with like a, a whole bunch. It just goes on and on and on. So. <laughs> Sorry, Bon, but I could have rode Guardians. I was just a couple minutes late. Okay, now this is gonna be even funnier, but you know how I said, sorry, Bonnie, I didn't answer your call? Well, she was actually calling me to tell me that my boarding group was called for Guardians of the Galaxy because we're on the My Disney Experience app together, and she gets the notifications on her phone, and she's in Pennsylvania, and she thought it was funny. Sometimes she does that, like, so if I mobile order something, um, uh, like, she'll get the notification on her phone, too, and she'll be like, your food's ready, and stuff like that, and joke around, but it was kind of funny. It, if I would have answered her call, I probably would have stayed in the park. On my way out, I noticed this sign. I know that they changed the parking icons. Like it's not one, or it's not like Journey or Discover. It's actually characters. But I never seen this sign before where they put Earth Tram, 
Earth lots and space lots. I don't think they have a space tram because we're in space and not every Disney park has trams back yet, but it's really interesting. I like the Epcot logo, how they're actually incorporating and everything. And I like the Epcot font, like especially the E. I'm not too sure how I feel about Wally -E and, you know, Gamora and stuff like that as the icons. I mean, Epcot I can see, but I would like to see a little bit more, you know? Some other characters, definitely Wally and Evie, they're good, but I don't know about Rocket and Gamora. Where's my Gracie girl? Where is she? Gracie, <gasps> there she is, woohoo, let me see that face. Show us your smile, show it to us, yes, there it is. Oh, oh. Give me that smile, give me it. <laughs> there she is, yes. <laughs> yes, oh, your baby girl. You guys got an extra treat today. Gracie really was smiling there. I love the way Dalmatians smile because they, they show their teeth a little bit, but it looks like they're like angry and like they're growling, but that's how they smile and it's so cute. She did it. She was like, Arr. How are you today, Miss Gracie? You doing good? Huh? Everybody says hello. I missed you. I miss you so much. Yes, yes. Look at that. All right, I just got done taking Gracie for her evening stroll. It was a nice little night, but remember I was telling you it gets cold out and it got a lot colder out. So on my way to Disney Springs, I decided to switch out my outfit. I'm wearing my nice uh, Cake Castle uh, hoodie that I got and it's time to go see Shazam. Maybe grab something to eat before. You know what I mean? I'm a little hungry, didn't eat a lot at the festival and there's always some go-to spots down at Disney Springs. So we'll see, we'll take it as it goes. I'm also wearing my pink LaCroix uh, shorts to match my castle hoodie. Actually, I look pretty good. I like pink, maybe I should start wearing it more. What do you guys think? I like it. I think it's a nice combo. <laughs> And we have made it to Disney Springs. We have a couple of minutes before the movie, so I was thinking about getting something to eat. I got two places on my mind. I got Pizza Ponte for maybe a slice, and then also I got uh, Chef Art Smith's Homecoming. You know, maybe grab some of that delicious chicken dumpling soup. I think I'm gonna walk over to Chef Art Smith's and see if I can do a walk up or sit at the bar. If that's the case, I would rather that, but I do love me some pizza ponte. That's usually what I get before I go see a movie, and I don't wanna break tradition, but I do love me some soup. And would you look at that? They actually had first come, first serve at the bar, and it doesn't seem like there's anybody sitting there, so I'm first. My two favorite restaurants here at Disney Springs are definitely Boathouse and here at Chef Art Smith's. And I cannot wait to dive into that chicken and dumpling soup. Wait till I show you, you guys will see why. It's so, so good. Here is a look at the menu. They've got Addie Mae's chicken and dumpling soup. I love getting this. They don't have it like as a, a cup, so you have to get the full thing and it's $14. So I think I'm gonna get that. And then also for my entree, I'm gonna get the char grilled chicken. Nice, I had this before, it's excellent chicken. And I know a lot of people say, how can you come to homecoming and not get the fried chicken? I'm actually getting the char grilled chicken because I really do like it. It comes with roasted potatoes and vegetables and then this nice sweet potato mash. They also have a lot of good moonshine here. They got a moonshine margarita. They got a sweet tea shine. They've got blue hooch. They've got rum shine punch and strawberry lemonade but I decided on getting just myself a nice little Arnold Palmer. And here it is, the chicken and dumpling soup. Look at this. Oh, it is so good. The broth or like the, the, the dumplings, everything. I just, I, I honestly, I dream about this soup sometimes. I get like a craving for it. So I'm glad we got to try it today. Good soup. All right, now it's time for the main event. Look at this. Two char grilled chicken. We've got zucchini, carrots, potatoes, avocado, and then sweet potato mash. And look how it's served. Doesn't this look good? Like, I, it's, you know, a lot of the entrees get slept on here. It's not just all about the fried chicken. One of the things I like most about this 
is probably the vegetables, the carrots and the zucchini. It's all so good. But I've never had the sweet potato mash. I've only ever got them with the Brunswick stew. But I figured since I had dumpling soup, I don't need stew. So we're going to dive in here and see what this is like. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. First time trying this. That is amazing. I'm going back in. Wow. I need to cut up some of that chicken and then swab it with that sweet potato mash. That is so good. We're going to take some of this chicken. Then we're just going to go baloop. Just like that. Just like that. That was too good. I'm throwing in the towel. Throwing in the towel. I'm full. That seriously did the trick. And the crazy thing about it is now we're going to go sit through like a two and a half hour long movie. Just had that gigantic meal. It was good though. I couldn't finish the sweet potato like mash. That was way too much. I ate my veggies and my chicken. Of course, I had my chicken and dumpling soup. But uh, yeah, Chef Art Smith. Still uh, taking that number, like, I, I can't even put a number one or two on it. They're just my favorite two, and that's it. And it, it, it's gonna be like that for a while. Never had a bad meal here. Even though Ant-Man and Quantumania has been out for a while, it's still the major, like, focal point for the advertisements down here at AMC. Also, look, they got spotlights up there, but we're gonna head in. I'm so excited, I love coming here. I love going to the movies, too. That's just the best thing ever. They've got some hot food here. Let's see, we've got some pretzels. We've got some chicken tendies. We've got some gourmet popcorn, some nachos, some pizza, a lot of stuff. The pretzel and drink combination is more expensive than my meal at Chef Art Smith's. Oh, and some mozzarella sticks sitting here too. It's not just the fancy old popcorn, they got the good stuff. I'm definitely not going to be getting any snacks right now because I am full. It's time to head in and find our seat and get comfy. Here is the Dolby Cinema at AMC that I was talking about. I love coming into this theater. And I love how it always has like a little show over here. I'm excited to watch this movie. And I can hear my voice already getting dampened. We got the nice reclining seats. They go all the way back. All the way back. Here we go. I'm going down. <laughs> Let's not invite Chuck. Whoa! Sure, he struggles on conference calls. And if I'm lucky, nobody's gonna sit next to me so I can put this up. And then I got a couch to lay on. Look at that. And with that, I think we are done here today. I love Shazam 2. I thought it was a great movie. At the end, the storyline got a little bit messy, but it was funny. It was action-packed. I think it was better than Black Adam. In fact, I think it was better than most of the Marvel Phase 4 and 5 films that already came out. Like, I really, really enjoyed it. I hope they keep that character, because I thought it was awesome. I loved number one, and now I love number two. And yeah, I think we're all done here today. It was a great day. Got to share it all with you. Epcot to Disney Springs. And now I get to go home and just call it a night. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.